uh, way it needs to be looked at. You, you're, you're just sitting there arguing about a whole bunch of stuff. The offensive line was absolutely consistent in the pocket protecting. Uh, you know, you just don't want to see it because the Broncos won. I mean, what, I mean, what, what is it you, you got a problem with? I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, you sound like Wanu Wanu and, you know, you're acting like one of those Kool-Aid drinkers, you know, that just believe everything that comes out of that game, you know. Uh, psych. <laughs> this is not the Kool-Aid. No, 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 no. We did not win the Super Bowl. <laughs> You're discredited. We won the Super Bowl. Over one preseason game. Oh, my God. The, the, you know, you really are a moron. And you, not you, the, the people that are coming out uh, with this whole, you need to shut up. You know, you, did, you don't know what you're talking about. You better start pumping the brakes on, <laughs> on this. Uh, there are problems out there. Of course, you, none of you Kool-Aid drinkers want to see that. Uh, I did get some positive, there were some positive things, but I mean, I, just the overall, I have problems overall. I want to talk about some positives, start off with some positives, uh, for me anyway, and you're, you're going to argue about this because we, we're kind of doing a skit here. We, we're going back and forth on this offensive line and you got to look at it in layers. And yes, when I saw Seattle's backups they look much better i I mean i get all that but just looking at this game uh for johnson on scoring drives the i saw one thing that i i was happy to see was the quick passing type of a game as opposed to a lot of rolling out design rollouts and stuff i don't want to see like that becoming the the norm offense, it seemed to be oriented for the pocket, for a pocket passing game to me, more so than there were design rollouts. Uh, I thought that the offensive line, albeit backups, uh, were more consistent with the, uh, in their uh, uh, pass pro with the pocket, as far as pocket. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying what I saw on film. Uh, I counted it. They they kept the pocket um, for the quarterback more than it broke down on the pocket. Uh, but before we get into the negatives, uh, your Hennessy guy that nobody wanted to talk about created a, a an interception being a push up the middle. He, he was a that push up the middle created a, a interception. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blow this whole thing up, though. Uh, there are a number of problems. Of course, that's being negative. You know, uh, acknowledging glaring problems is, is being negative instead of being realistic. And I'll say that uh, Hackett had uh, the players better prepared. Dallas, uh, you know, if they were, weren't screwing up all the time, this may have been a different game. Also, their quarterback tends to hold on to the football. That helped out the Broncos. Uh, so Dallas, you know, their backup anyway, uh, contributed to a lot of success for the Broncos as far as screwing up. And actually, I saw penalties that they didn't even call on Dallas. It was it was really that bad that they were settled down, I guess. So that's my positive take. Do you have any positive takes at all? Um, positive takes for me, I'm just looking at my... Uh notes here um i mean man i i just uh i'm really trying to (laughs) i'm really trying to find positives i you found more than me um i thought one guy that really stood out was that number 68 uh johnson i think that's a disagreement on your part too um i thought that johnson number 68 that we got from the packers i i think that He's a developmental guy that I actually want to see more of. What position um, did he play? Because I know no, nobody knows what position this guy plays. Uh, uh, number 68, left. Uh, he was playing left tackle. 
but I believe he's more of a guard developing developing prospect more than a tackle prospect. Um, I just thought they didn't have enough bodies at the tackle position, so they were putting guards out there to uh, alleviate the pain that would have happened at the tackle positions. Um, but there's a also, ray of hope with him if he gets developed correctly. Yeah, there, there's a ray of hope with him. Um, and also another guy that I thought did pretty good, um, he showed some flashes. He wasn't consistent. Uh, but Matt H- Hennison is a guy that I'm really intrigued about just due to the fact that if they wouldn't put him at the fucking nose tackle, and that's going to be one of my negatives about this game, but strictly talking to him about Matt Hennison, if they put him at the three tech and a three, four defense in between a guard and a center, I think that's something that he could be very successful at doing, collapsing that pocket a la Derek Wolf back in 2015. Again, I my pro comparison was of him coming out of Wisconsin was Derek Wolf. Everybody laughed at my face. Eric Trickle, you know, it's going to come bite you in the ass. I believe it. Um, you laughed at my face when I was comparing him to Derek Wolf and there was a play that he caused an interception for uh, the corner. And uh, it was because of the interior pass rush that collapsed into that pocket that caused the interception. So those were the two takeaways I took away from this game. I thought also special teams, I'll give credit where credit is due. Yeah, special yeah, team. yeah. I guess should, yes, yes. They, they wasn't uh, a special, disaster. I mean, yes, it, was, it, it wasn't was a disaster, that, but it, it, it was good. I guess it was okay. But again, it, I, don't, it, I want. Well, it, that's, the, that's, that's how low we've dropped. But it, this is, again, this we're talking first preseason game here. But yes. It, it wasn't. But it, again, it, I'm tired of that. It wasn't a disaster. I'm, I'm tired of that first. Pre- again, it's still a game. It's still reps. It's still repetition. It's still developmental. I still want to see these guys on the field developing. You know, you. I took more away from what I saw from the Cowboys practice than this game. But again, a lot of people in the general audience who doesn't. Again, I I watched this game three times. Compared it to so many uh, other. I want you later. to get into that. I want you to get into but, that. But, 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 but I'll get into it later, but I just want no, to I want talk you to get about into my now. I want you to get into it now. When you compare okay. your, when you compare, compare player personnel, I guess you have to throw the Cowboys in, too, because they played. Uh, when, you, when you're comparing player personnel, for me, the Cowboys were always a team muddling in the middle as well. But uh, when you uh, compare – the Broncos Cowboys versus what you saw with the Steelers, uh, Seattle with what you saw and Ravens, these other games get into what you see with other player personnel. Um, so what I did this morning and what I did really late last night, uh, I was up, (laughs) barely got any sleep. This is what I live for. But, um, anyway, I, uh, I went to, Uh, the Eagles game because I was really, really intrigued by their draft and how they drafted. So I, I really wanted to compare the Broncos offensive line, second and third string against the uh, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, second and third string. And then I went down the list with the Patriots giants and uh, Steelers and Ravens and Seahawks. Um, Yeah. This is where we part ways. I totally disagree with you about this offensive line for the Denver Broncos. I think you're giving them giving it way too much credit for what they deserve because of the past six years and then what uh, what we saw. I saw Graham Glasgow get pushed back. I saw Luke Wattenberg get pushed back. I saw Quinn Bailey get pushed back. And when I'm watching Cam Jurgens or the Seattle's offensive line, second and third string, Charles Cross played. He got a bunch of playing time. Looked like a looked like a stable left tackle, like I was saying, and everybody laughed in my face. Without all the pushback. Without all the pushback. Without all the pushback, like you saw from Quinn Bailey and Johnson and Calvin Anderson and Cameron Fleming at times. Um, I disagree that they were consistent. I I don't agree with that analysis, but we the, hey. Agree to disagree, but well, that's not entirely what I'm saying. But go ahead. I just want you to keep on this. Okay. Uh, but but continuing down this track of comparing player player personnel for the offensive lines, I want people to truly understand. Just because the Broncos had a supposedly good game that the Cowboys had mental errors and were given Denver short fields and everything, and giving them ten to fifteen yard penalties every other play, 
doesn't mean that the offense and the team was consistent in the preseason against the Cowboys. I want people, I have it on my list here, Cowboys beat themselves. More than the Broncos showed something consistently. There were plays that were inconsistent that no one will talk about. But when you look at the Giants, Patriots, Ravens, Eagles, offensive lines compared to the Josh Johnson offensive line and the Brev Rippon offensive line, it's not even close because they're developing players and they're building it piece by piece by piece by piece. Okay, so what I'm saying with the offensive line was this. I'm just saying what I saw on the film. Uh, wait, wait a second. I'm no, just you're fine. What, you're what fine. I, I, I'm seeing on the film is, you know, there's the running blocking, the run blocking. There is the pass pro. There is uh, a play action blocking. And pull and pulling too, pull blocks or the la- well the about lack that. of pulling. I I didn't really. Anyway, the uh, the thing the thing I I made note of, particularly on the scoring drives, mostly on scoring drive. I counted they they didn't allow the pocket to collapse as much during those as when they did collapse. So it collapsed. It was. They were getting pushed back, but they were able to maintain the pocket more. Okay. I just want to explain this, too. You got to remember, this is the backups we're talking about here. We're talking about the backups here and their backups, number one. Now, that's what I saw on film. Now, this is what I also saw on film. The Broncos' offensive line couldn't run the run block to save their life. If their life depended on it. They couldn't run block, and I'll tell you what, that's that's a concern. And I want to talk about concern, too, about offensive line concerns. I, I, I've i told you, I'm not, I'm not going to bullshit it around with anything. I'll give you the positive, but you better listen to the negatives. I know Kool-Aid, we don't want to hear any negatives. It was all, there was absolutely no negatives. That's what the morons do. That's what the toxic fans do. Real fans, we're, we're looking at everything. Um, the, uh, it, it was scary. We're just talking right now about there's a lot of things that scared me. What really scared me was all the video you supply clip after clip after clip after clip after clip of the number ones during that session where our left and right tackle were basically having their ass handed to them play after play after play on on uh, throwing downs. I would say the same thing about Reisner and Cushenberry, too. Because there, there were plays that I sent you that showed that interior pass rush that helped those edges collapse the side of the pocket, too. You saw the interior. You started seeing when they were doing those quick one- to two-step drops with Wilson. Yeah. You saw the two. You saw the interior pressure, guys, get that initial pressure. But then you saw Parsons and his running mate, Fowler, starting to – and uh, I think it was Lawrence as well – starting to – pinch that side so Wilson couldn't move around, stay in that pocket for him to and, and there were many times on the Cowboys uh, feed against the Broncos in practice was like, oh, that's a sack that's a sack, that's a sack, that's a sack I know, that's I know not it, it, so yeah. I want to tell you, Wano Wano we're, we're not going away, you're a moron anybody, anybody who stands on this game as if it's the Super Bowl and saying those guys don't know anything, you're a fucking moron now, conversely, if the if the Broncos lost this game like the Cowboys in the fashion the Cowboys, I wouldn't be sitting there saying this is the definitive thing either. Uh, on, yes. on that, that side of the thing, I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm, we're breaking everything down, no matter what's going on. But this includes that that practice because we never got to see the starters. Okay, and that's what we're seeing is worrisome. The fact that this team couldn't run the football is worrisome. And we're just talking about the offensive line. We haven't even got into everything else yet. No, no, we're just getting started. <laughs> we're just getting started. So, you know, we had back and forth about, you know, what does it, you know, I think where we're trying to define is what, what, what are we saying when we're saying offensive line? We're talking about backups against uh, Cowboy backups. We're talking about, you know, that's all we're talking about here. Uh, I'm really concerned about what we were seeing in the uh, in the drills. Okay, one thing that you look, okay. So now that I think of it, now that we have talked on camera and have become more detailed on what we're saying, the one thing I will agree with you on that on something is 
when the Broncos were getting those quick passing games in rhythm, I do agree with you that the offensive line was stable enough for Johnson to hit those quick throws in the middle of the field and also the outside. That is something I will agree with you on. But, but when it got off kiltered and he held it on for two to three seconds, that's when I saw the breakdowns consistently start to happen from the interior and the outside. I just want to bring that up. Well, I, I said that before when they hired Hackett, I said – since they're not really addressing their offensive line properly, you're going to have to design quick throws, uh, middle of the field, most likely, you know, everything that, you know, if, if keeping, you know, Wilson in the pocket, but it has to be a, a quick, quicker, quicker offense. And, and also what I mean by, because I want to define what I meant by when the play started to break, uh, break down. When Johnson had to go to a second, third, fourth read. Okay, let me rephrase that. When he had to go to a second half, third, and fourth read, that's when that pressure started to apply itself from guys like, we'll get into it yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, agree, I'll agree with that. Because of that, them being pushed back. I agree yeah, with just that. Because, and I, and I, will, I will actually say that you are right on the part where when they would get that rhythm going and they get those quick throws in the middle of the field and do a lot of drag routes, hitch routes, five yard hitch routes. Yeah, I agree with you there. The, the offensive line was stable enough to hold up in that end. But what, when I was speaking to you on voice message, the part I was concerned about is when we face the good teams in the league and they have better depth and have better player personnel, What's going to happen when those reads start to diminish and Russell Wilson's going to have to start going to his second, third, fourth, fifth if, read? If he even can get to that. If he can even get to that, if exactly. If he can even get to that, yes. To sit there and pound your chest just shows you're a moron. The, 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 Steeler, the Steeler radio is just using Denver as a punching bag, the whole. Yep. Yeah, and like I said, it, this team literally hasn't got the depth uh, that, that these liars – are saying that they have. They don't. Uh, and this game didn't prove anything that they do, anything at all. I, I, you know, you saw receivers dropping, doing dropsy doodles. Uh, yep. there, there was some great, there was a, a hitting, did some bad things, but then he made up for it with a, some a, good a, things. Yeah. Beautiful catch. I'm not big, I'm not a big hitting person. There was number 19. Is that Williams, 19? Uh, yeah, uh, Williams. Seth Williams. Yeah, he looks like he could be something, you know, that the Broncos, you know, a little on, you know, something they can go to. Maybe could develop. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be positive here. Uh, I'm just trying to go through the offense. You know, the go running. Yeah. There was, not, there was yeah. no run. None. None was, well, let's know. let's let's elaborate on that. I really, I mean, we haven't really elaborated. We were talking about the pass blocking phase. I really want to get your uh, perspective on the run blocking phase because I, I, I it, it couldn't even, it didn't even, ha it never, it never had a chance once. Never even got started. Well, they had, you like, saw, you, I think you they had saw, one, one decent play at the whole, the really. The whole, all the way up to the third. I, 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 I think there was like one to three. I just give being generous. I'm there might have been a, one that was decent. Okay, well, yeah. well, but but again, when you look at the opposite end of the spectrum with the Cowboys, for example, they were, and we're going to get into the defense later. Yeah, yeah that's all were, the defense. When we get, yeah, this whole. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into the defense. <laughs> oh, we'll get into that. Oh, but but the offensive line for the Broncos, unlike the offensive line for the Cowboys, that was getting five to ten yards per pop running the ball the oh, yeah. Broncos could barely get two to three yards a pop or a yard because yeah, it was just it was so atrocious and th that's something that concerns me because I'm telling you you're you're saying something that really caught my attention about Hackett running the more power run scheme with the west coast they do they I'm telling you they do not have the bodies to run that scheme a lot of the scheme that they have in the starters their agile offense alignment outside of a Graham Glasgow and a Tane Moody and maybe a Lloyd Cushenberry to some degree. But you're not talking about the, again, this, this offense relies, and I mean relies, being able to get to the second level, pushing guys back on the offensive line. That gives that quarterback time to stay in the pocket, maneuver, and get a lot of drag routes, a lot of 10-yard post routes in the middle of the field. But again, when, you, when they were running those play-action plays, the Broncos, 
a lot of free runners were happening. Oh yeah, it, it was reminded me of Pat breakdown. Shermer. It reminded me of Pat Shermer. Yeah, so. it was total breakdown. Fortunately, they didn't do a lot of that. However, with running, I I think they realized it wasn't working, so that's why they went away from it. The worry that I have is that on with the first string, they're not. I think they're. I think Elway and I think Hackett and, and them are going to be stubborn because. I'm telling you, the West Coast zone running principles rely off of that play action. They do a lot of stretch plays left and right, do a lot of pulling. And when you get that pulling and stretch play going, that that stresses oh. out a defense and you got to run that play action. You cannot continue to run these short, intermediate, one hit, two yard hitch routes because defenses definitely... are going to pick them. Go ahead. Again, we're talking backups here, but I know you, you re- referred the first string. We're talking backups here, but. That got exposed. The fact that they had a try to power run, which they can't do. No, and they don't have the bodies to do They don't that. have the body. And then they were. it was just a train wreck when they decided to start pulling on those uh, play action passes. So that was gla- a glaring a glaring weakness uh, that, that reared its head. I'm sure the Kool-Aid Nation, Kool-Aid Nation out there uh, didn't catch that, but uh, it, it, was, it was glaring. Uh, um, also, also, can can we uh, can we please put the stamp on cutting Graham Glasgow? I mean, I mean, this guy sucks. This guy absolutely sucks. I'm tired of Graham Glasgow. He played center and he played right guard in this game, and he was. I I just I, he I, had his I, hands I, full oh. with backups. He had his hands full with backups. Yeah, with backups. Can you with imagine backups. if Miners and that go down, you're going to have Graham Glasgow. I'd rather have Natane Moody out there than Graham Glasgow. Now, you know, we, we speaking of the offensive line, we found something really interesting was Bailey. Uh, yes. I, I didn't Go realize, yep. but you know, you can't trust Dove Valley. They're such, so They're sm- liars. Yeah, liars. I thought he was a first year, I you know, he had one year experience. I thought he had one year, that's oh. what it said on their website. But then you show me, He's been around since 2019, 2019, excuse me. He was an undrafted free agent out of Arizona State. He's been on the practice squad, and he played last year's preseason. So I don't know where that one-year experience is coming from. Yeah, so just, again, bullshitting their their way. Um, that guy, oh. uh, I'm telling you, man, if, if, he, if they're going to rely on him, I, now I don't know if he's going to make the team or not. I, I don't, you know, I can't say. But I would just cut him. You were playing him a lot, and I'm just saying, if if he ends up in there, I mean, it's bad enough with 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 uh, what's his face, uh, Calvin Anderson. Well, no, on the other side, uh, uh, Garrett Holds. Garrett Holds. Oh, yep. Bad enough yep. with him, but man, if Bailey gets in there, <laughs> Not oh boy. And this goes now. This goes to your depth question when you look at all these other teams. So. We don't have it. It just that's the bottom line. You you don't have you yeah exactly Wanu Wanu. You don't have the uh, I, I, and this is what I was trying to get over. And I wasn't uh, disagreeing with anything you were saying. The only part that I am trying to hey when you watch this preseason, keep an eye. I want to see the progression of players, and I I also want to see what they developed over the off season because that's what I looked at. I mean, I was looking at Giants. I was looking at the Giants backups, and they were mauling dudes. The Eagles, the Patriots, the Chiefs, the the uh, the Seahawks with uh, Drew Locke. And people are shitting on Drew Locke because of a fumble. Ridiculous. Uh, but you have all this ridiculous notions out there that, you know, we have the depth on this team. No, you don't. I'm sorry. No, compared to the good teams in the league, no, you do not. I'm sorry to burst it. You do not. <clears throat> well, I what I saw of Locke though with Seattle, he looked pretty good. I, was, I mean, he better. I mean, he got. He looked like he had time to throw the ball, and he actually had some in the he didn't Denver time, time to yeah, plenty of time to throw the football. He looked relieved. He, he looked fresh. So. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, also Seattle's uh, run blocking looked phenomenal. Good, good luck with that. Are you ready to segue over to? Defense. <laughs> oh, do we have? To? Well, you talk about the lying machine. You know the the spins. You know they had to do for this defense. There, they were. Is, I think this first is of where all, we're gonna burst some bubbles here. So, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know they, they they won the Super Bowl. What are we talking about here? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juan. Yeah, ba- Baron Browning. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to get into him. Baron Browning. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Not an edge. He's not an edge. Sorry no. to burst it. Well, this He's is the not. thing. I'm just saying that when I looked at the film, I didn't see a guy that was oh, head and shoulders over Malik Reed, number one. I agree. Number two, their uh, rush tends to hold on to the football a little too long. The quarterback There's, rush. I, I, I pointed out the film. I told you where to look, gave you time code. I said, here's a guy wide open. He's not didn't, – didn't bother even to look his way. He's holding on to the ball, so you're, I mean, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, he looks, you look good when you got quarterbacks that uh, like that, but you're going to be facing that during the season. And Most- also, uh, I, uh, Wanu Wanu, the you know King Kong himself. Yeah. Um, you do realize he was facing a second, third string left tackle, right? He was. Yeah, I, I just want, I just want you to know, he's not facing an All Pro Tyron Smith. When healthy is a top three left tackle in the well, fucking league. You know that again. Just you, you know why they're being proves there. our point. Well, it not it not that's only part of proves our point. The other point is he's going to be sitting on the bench while Gregory's out there. Well, I guess Reed is out there, and Jonathan uh, Cooper. Yeah, Don't forget about him. Yeah, well, he can sit on the bench too, right? He's good, so sit him on the bench. But Browning should be in the middle of the field as a starter. I agree. As a I starter. agree. I agree. As a starter, not sitting on the bench hoping to get a a, a, a rotational uh, spot on the edge. Yeah, yeah. A few plays here and there, <clears throat> playing edge rusher. Again, no. Your your Browning makes no sense. It you no. There's no spinning this. It makes no sense, and it's going to raise big time. It's going to raise its ugly head come the season. Well, even even when you were watching the game, and I was telling you throughout the game. They were running at his side, and we're going to get into his running mate later. But they were running on his side, and they were doing play oh, action pass, rolling out what? to his side, right, and dumping it over on. Nobody wants to talk about how Dallas was busting. No, they don't. Yeah. He was not a consistent pass rusher. Yes, he had a few good plays here and there. But I'm taught, again, the, they, they, they just don't want consistency in Denver. They want inconsistent players that do jack shit. Now, if I was, if we were doing Dallas, I mean, 